a baby leopard seal there called Silas. And Silas is one of the stars of Ice Pups, mm. a new documentary following a pack of leopard seals over one Antarctic winter. Hydrogeleptonics, to use the Latin Ooh. term. I've yeah, done a little bit of reading, so... Someone's very keen. Yeah, well, I'm keen. I'm, I'm keen to give of my best. Here to tell us more about these mustachioed mammals is the show's creator, Alice Clunt. Welcome. Oh, it's Alice Fluck. Right, I see what I've done. <laughs> so, Alice, uh, this isn't your first time getting close to the animal kingdom, is it? Once upon a time, you were shortlisted in the Shell Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition. Yeah, many moons ago, mm. yes. The oil company, Shell. They used to yeah. sponsor it, yes. yes. Well, do you know what? Good for them. I mean, you know, they get a lot of stick, don't they, for the Exxon Valdez oil spill, but then they sponsor a prize for animal photos, and you think, hmm, maybe it's time to take a fresh look at Shell. Uh, but tell us about ice pups, because leopard seal pups really are the most incredible animals, aren't oh, they? They really are, Jenny. I mean, what you see in the pups, and hopefully in the film, is their spirit and mm. their personality. Because, don't forget, these guys are living in the most inhospitable place in the whole world. Mm. You know, they are tough. You do not want to mess with a, with a leopard seal. Well over a <laughs> tonne, uh, teeth like giant daggers, top speed of 20 knots. A German U-boat commander would kill for velocity like that. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. Well, what you see in the film, they do have this wonderfly playful mm. side as yeah. well. And yeah. how? They toss penguins around like a rag doll and batter them against the sea till they're dead. Just wait for it. For fun. Mm. Brutal. Mm. Well, they're, they're, they're mischievous, uh, certainly. And, and that comes from just being so intelligent. Well, the Allies train them to deliver mines strapped to their backs to scuttle enemy craft in harbour. Boom. Successful. We don't really touch on that on this film. This film is more about them in infancy and adolescence, and hopefully it's one the whole family can enjoy. Aww. Aww. Wrong tone. Wow, they're plucky little so-and-sos, though, aren't they? They have to be. You know, they're only weaned for a month, oh. and then it's up to them to fend for themselves. Oh, breaks your heart, doesn't it? <laughs> when you're around them such a long time, it, it is hard not to get attached. Oh. Oh. Oh, I think I'm a bit in love. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Bless them. Oh. They're the most adorable little creatures. Mm. They seem to have such personality. You almost want to give them a name. Well, don't th you? This one's called Silas. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I know. I mean, a better one, though, like Richard. Oh, I don't know whether to eat him up or wear him. Do you know what I mean, though? I suppose Eskimos do both. Well, you find leopard seals in the Antarctic. Falklanders, then. Now, Alice, uh, the film ends with the sound of a seal cry, and it's quite a sound, isn't it? <laughs> uh, actually, let's hear it. Not a sound you forget. No. <laughs> when I heard that, I had an overwhelming sense of Gary Newman. And you know the other musician I was thinking of? Don't know why. Seal. I do know why. Uh, it it's almost sounds sort of philosophical, doesn't it? Yes. I don't think that's the right word, Jenny. I think it's remindful. It uh, reminded me of my granddad. Did it? Yeah. He made funny noises and he had whiskers and he liked fish. Mm. He was a smashing granddad. One of my earliest memories, actually, is him uh, taking me to the fun fair, and me asking for a candy floss, and then eventually he gave in and got me one, and took me home, uh, said goodbye, but left his hat. And when I ran to the bus stop, uh, he wasn't there. And I saw he was walking up the hill. That's when I realised he'd spent his bus fare on my candy floss. Grandad Graham. Grandad. And you can see the whole of Alice's film on BBC One tomorrow night. Alice Clant. Fluck. Fuck. Fluck. Thank you very much for joining us. Why are clean hands important? Because humans are the most effective incubators of bacteria outside of imported meat. A fact first discovered 150 years ago in Soho, when its filthy reputation was based not on pole dancers from Lapland or lap dancers from Poland, Poland but because of an outbreak of cholera. Imagine going into a newsagent and ordering not a can of Coca-Cola, but a can of Coca-Cola. That's effectively what the Soho residents were doing in 1854 when they came to draw water from this pump to sate, slake, or quench their thirst. That was before the physician John Snow discovered that the disease was spread through contaminated water. And this paved the way for the invention of antibiotics, a remedy against bacteria that initially seemed infallible. I said initially slightly louder because 
Whilst antibiotics once stopped bacteria like these from breeding like randy Catholic rabbits, their prophylactic power has become dulled through overuse. Many liken antibiotics to giving a box of chocolates to an angry spouse. The first time, the chocolates will overwhelm the wife and quell her ire completely. The sixth, seventh time, the chocolates still subdue the miffed woman, but less than they had earlier. And by the twentieth time, the chocolates have little to no potency and can even inflame the problem further. I was troubled by this. I knew more than ever before that we needed to wash our hands. But were we doing? To find out for myself, I've come to the gents' toilets at the BBC to conduct a study of my own. Hello, Alan Partridge, BBC. Uh, did you wash your hands? Yep. Good man. I've concentrated exclusively on the gents' loos, uh, a man standing outside a women's lavatory can be seen as predatory. Equally, a man loitering outside a gentleman's toilet uh, can be fraught with ambiguity. So, uh, to put it on a more formal footing, I've got this woman with a clipboard. Uh, sorry, what's your name? Sarah. 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 Okay. The BBC employs some 20,000 people. Just write that down. And not all of them are going to wash their hands. Right, it is Thera. I thought, I thought you had a list. <laughs> no, it's Arabic. OK. Menial workers, for example, are employed to pick up bits of dirt, and the likelihood of them ever being asked to shake hands with senior management are very low. Put them down as a no. Still, the results made for grim reading, with just 28% saying they washed their hands. Yeah, I'm going to wash my own hands later. <coughs> Swindon. And I've come to the British School of Hygiene to ask Professor Jean Chowdhury how clean hands can stop the spread of germs. Hi, Jean. Hi. Hi. Jean, hand washing. How often should we be washing them? Well, any time we come into contact with bacteria. So, um, after going to the toilet. Agreed. Uh, after handling raw meat. Right, and that's separate, isn't it? That's not a euphemism for the first one. No. Uh, raw meat can harbour some pretty nasty bacteria, so if in doubt, wash. And the advice from the World Health Organisation is that we should be washing our hands for a full 20 seconds. 15 is fine. Which is why there's actually an instructional video which shows exactly how to wash your hands. Mm. Yes, please. So we begin by rubbing the palms together, work up a nice creamy lather. Those are very creamy hands. And then you rub the back of your left hand with the right palm with interlaced fingers. Yeah. And same with the other hand. Yeah. And rinse with warm water. Yeah. Um, that's, those taps are the same as the ones over there. Oh, yeah, we shot it here. Well, so those are uh, your hands. Mm -hmm. 